there, if you just look at this male impala over here, how his fur is all puffed up. So he's kind of got his jersey on, if you want to call it that. He's puffed his fur up to trap air against the body and to try and make himself a little warmer. And they will do this, and then as soon as it swarms up, they flatten the hair down, and it becomes a lot warmer for them. I mean, a lot cooler for them. But you can see it's all kind of puffed out. It's not as fine as it normally is. Now, you'll also notice that his hip bones are sticking out quite a bit. So our impalas generally are in good condition, but the males at this time of the year has come out of the rutting season, which means males have not fed correctly. They've been chasing one another. They've been fighting with one another. And that means that they lose a lot of condition. So not uncommon to see hip bones protruding on male impalas at this time of the year. You'll find that once the summer comes, they'll pack that weight on again and they'll be just fine. There's a few scars from fighting. And they really are such beautiful animals. What you'll also notice there with the horns is that they have these massive ridges all over the horns. Now when these guys clash, they'll do so with a lot of force and vigor. And those little ridges are going to really help with those horns to pack tightly against one another and mean that they can test each other's strength without the horns slipping and hurting each other. So you'll find a situation where the horn won't actually stab into another one and slip, it'll grip, and they can actually then test each other's neck strength, which is what they're trying to do. At the end of the day, they're not trying to kill one another. They're just trying to establish a dominance through strength. But he's obviously had a tough time of it. He's got a few scars on the sides of his body. Must have been a rough mating season for this particular boy. You can see there on his leg, there's one or two little scars around his hip area and then also on the side of his body. And I've actually seen with these impalas, we used to have a male impala that was running around on lion sands that for a while, and I'm sure it must have died eventually, but it had been fighting with another male, and the other male had skewered it in the side of its body and had broken its horn off in the abdomen of this impala. So it had a horn sticking out of its abdomen, which is fairly painful, I would imagine, and not something you'd want to experience at all. Isn't it nice how their horn structure changes? So there's a, about a two-year-old or two-and-a-half-year-old male, and you see how he's still got the bowed horns, and eventually those will then change to what we see from some of the other impalas where they sort of grow back and then upwards. So there's still going to be a bit of a change in his. So is he... Uh, Ridges on the horns don't indicate age like rings of a tree. You'll find that they'll be different per sort of animal. Um, I have heard this sort of talked about before, but if you have a look there, you would see that there are probably easily 20 to th ridges on that set of horns. Now, there are no impalas in this area that live to 20 years old. Most of our impalas will be lucky if they make it to seven. So it's no way indicates their age as they've been growing there's far too many rings there to indicate age so it's not how you determine their age at all ah, a bit of sunshine that's quite pleasant i'm sure the impalas will be quite happy about it too and then we've got some of the most beautiful birds in the world just walking around in front of us some of the starling family they're just bobbing around and always closely associated to antelope species so you'll see when these guys when antelope are around, these guys will just kind of peck around at the base of the antelope and try and see if they can't find any food items. Now, this particular starling is called a Birchall starling, and you can see that there is a dark, dark eye and very long tail, and that's how you can tell the Birchall's starling and know the difference between them. And up in Kenya, they probably have the most beautiful starling in the world called the Superb Starling. So I wonder if maybe James has seen one yet or if he's been able to put it on camera. They are absolutely magnificent. They've got a bright orange chest with these bright colored blue-green wings. They are phenomenally pretty. You can see our hornbill has just chased everybody out. It's typical of a hornbill. They dominate these areas and make sure that they push them out and make sure that they get the food items before the virtual stallings do. That's exactly how things work though. If size matters out here and make sure they can actually dominate what goes on.
pretty nice and it just shows you how after a while if you sit quietly and you don't move too much how the birds get used to you you can see how the birds have now come across when we first got here all the birds f flew and landed on trees but we've been sitting here for long enough and they're all just actually now starting to kind of feed right around the vehicle and not really worry about us at all so it shows sitting and being patient can work from time to time